Okay, so in our Canvas course, under Course Modules, you'll see this link for assignment sheets. We are going to introduce our first assignment, the Fantasy Landscape. So for each assignment, they're all there already. We have 10 for this semester. There is a one-page PDF document that describes the assignment. And so this is what you can reference if you're just wondering what you're supposed to do, what the parameters are. If you're a professional digital artist, the first job is to, to meet the requirements of what the client wants, what the, art, what the corporation wants. And that's the format. You know, it's not anything goes. So for this, it needs to be a, comp a composite, which means we're taking together images from different sources, and we need at least five different sources that we find, and we arrange them into one large composition of a landscape that is our own. And the final resolution should be at least 300 pixels per inch at at least 8 by 10 inches. Because we can print up to 13 by 19 inches in this lab, that's usually what I'll design it. Because you can always shrink an image, but you can't enlarge it without losing resolution. All right, I say fantasy landscape simply because it's not going to be something that really exists in the world. But you can push that idea of fantasy as far as you want. You can make it super believable, or you can make it um, have its own laws of physics. And this is very much, it's our first assignment, it's very technical. So there's a lot of things we're going to be um, exposed to for the first time, a lot of things that we'll be practicing. And it's not the most creative of the projects we'll be doing. But that said, we want to try to get inspired and do something we'll be interested in. And I give you a lot of tips here that will help, and we'll talk about that as we go through it. The other place you can look, but I wouldn't lean on it too much, is past student examples. So if you go under Digital One and Digital Assignments, the first assignment, Fantasy Landscape, you have my instructor demonstrations from past semesters. I even have a little video that just goes over some basics of compositing there. And then you have the two steps. So let's, you're required to post two things for this project. And first, this is what you'll be doing over the weekend. This is what I want at the beginning of next class to really have a good start. A sketch. Now, this doesn't look like anything, and I'll explain this. But basically, this is what ensures that you are making something original. It's like a puzzle plan. So it's after referencing images online that are large enough resolution on a theme that you've chosen. And this is kind of my plan for how I'll put those pieces together. And I'm going to ask that you sketch one that's a portrait format and one that's a landscape format. This one's portrait format. And then this is how it comes out when I put those elements together. So here's one that has the landscape format, the portrait format, and I chose the landscape format for that one. Same thing here. Little notes. This is good for your sketchbook. It's going to be a space setting. It's post-apocalyptic. It's going to be debris. This kind of thing. Floating stuff. This was Let's see, cliffside, frozen lake, kind of arctic design. Throw some bones in there. This is a shipwreck. I have shipwreck everywhere. It turned into this, kind of this shanty town. I don't see a shipwreck anywhere, but anyway. That's where it came from. This one was a desert. So these are the kind of things you can think about when you're thinking of a theme that you might explore. What's the um, what's the environment like? You know, what is the generic setting? What's the time frame? Is it something that happened in the past? Is it something futuristic? Is it something that's contemporary? Um, what's the time of day? You know, what are the weather conditions? That kind of thing. And you can get pretty out there with it. Like I said, you can do a a landscape all out of candy, or you can do something that's um, has giant caterpillars as mountains. That's where you get your textures from. And then we'll just play with it in different ways. So for this semester, videos within PhotoBucket, they're, they're uh, kept only 10 minutes, so it's just a quick introduction to compositing. But that's a source you can go to. And then you can also, of course, look at past student examples. 
Now, the reason I want you to have past student examples is to see that it's all possible, whether you've had any experience with digital art or not, art or not. Um, you can go through the process and you can get really respectable work, and it's going to get better and better through the semester. And we also might be using this project again in the later project. You'll have those options. So what I don't want you to use the past student examples for is, oh, I can do mountains and bridges and planets. That's what I'll do. You know, I want you to try to have your own reasons for doing it. This one uses all uh, video game stills, like post-apocalyptic video game stills, which are so photorealistic and were high resolution high resolution enough images online that they all work together beautifully. And sometimes you'll you'll end up composing compositing like 20 images together instead of five, but the minimum is five. And it's hard to to think overall in terms of shape and contrast, but we'll have a lot of control of changing the color of our reference, changing the the contrast, changing the lighting, and we'll be adding things like texture fills and just lots of other elements to really sell it. So we're going to try to let, let our own interests guide what we end up doing. So lots of examples. All right, what I want to do is first find some reference. So I'm going to think of a theme, and I'm thinking I want mountains. I haven't done a big mountain peak one. And then I'm going to challenge anyone who wants to accept this challenge to make this a little bit more creative, a little bit more interesting. I want you to try to fit a food item into your landscape some, somehow in a way that looks like a landscape item. So I have that as a challenge for myself. So I can look for mountains, and then I can look for lollipops, but that probably won't work. What will kind of fit into mountains? Well, maybe a chocolate bar that's broken. Maybe I can use that somewhere. Um, that's just a, an extra fun challenge if you want to do it. Or brownie. Oh, a brownie would work, like a crumbly rock brownie. But how do I find reference? Well, I can't just use whatever I find. I'm going to have to limit it because this is a raster project like the cartoon jumble. I need the size to be quite large, 10 megapixels or larger. Because I want to be able to print this up full size at full resolution. And luckily, when you're talking about landscape images online, there's no shortage. So I need something that's at least 10 megapixels. And then I like things that are vast. They have a lot of stuff I like, but also a lot of stuff around the stuff I like. <laughs> so that they can overlap with other elements and transition. So what do I do? I right click, I open them in a new tab. They're 10 megapixels, so they might take a little while to load, but then I'm going to, to click on view image and check it before I actually save it to my desktop. There's a nice little mountain stream. I'm also looking for sharp in focus reference. It doesn't help me if it's all blurry or if it has snow falling, even though it makes a cool photo, it makes it really difficult to use as a matched composite. And all I'm going to do in this first step before I make my sketch is collect reference. Because I limited my search parameters, I know all of these are big enough, potentially. I just need to check the quality of each one. And then I might get inspired to do slightly different solutions. Like I like all the water and the lakes. I like the, the odd colors. And it'd be cool to have a landscape with a lot of really dramatic mountains, but with different colors to each one. I need blue sky. It's a cool bridge. The only elements you are not allowed to use in this are figurative elements, so living things. So I don't, don't want you to have people in it. I don't want you to have animals in it. 
And I want you to try to not to have things that would move on their own, right? There should be a backdrop because we'll be putting things into it later, potentially. So you want it devoid of moving life. <laughs> it can have trees, but it shouldn't have flames, right? Because flames you expect to be moving all the time. So we need it to work as a static backdrop. Okay, so I've opened a bunch up. Oh, this one's beautiful. But I'm trying to look past their individual merits, and instead I'm going to create a folder on the desktop. I'm going to name it Landscape Reference. And so far I've only looked for mountains, but this should give me ideas for other things I might want. And I can view the image, zoom in. That is nice, sharp focus. There's all these people down here. I would want to get rid of that but I have a lot of kind of overlap here. I like the, the overlap in the clouds. Doesn't mean I have to use it, but it gives me a start. Now this one, that's a little bit blurrier as a photo. It's not as strong, but it's not terrible. So you're gonna collect more than five images, but you're gonna sketch with the idea of using at least five of them. Now that's quite strong. Nice dramatic use of light and texture. That's really helpful there as a transition element. And digital artists spend a lot of time researching images, collecting images, categorizing images. You see we're getting different qualities of rock here, different color schemes. A lot of them are coming from wallpaper sites. That one's really big, I'll let it load for a while. But by compositing together our own image and by sketching it first, we're going to avoid those copyright concerns of leaning too heavily on any other person's work. Right? But we can take the qualities we like from these photos and use them to make our own idea. I like those, those red rock elements. Very nice. Sometimes it can be nice to have something like a bridge or the ruins of a building to set kind of a human scale to it, even though we're not putting humans in the frame. It can help make something like what I'm going to do look much bigger if we can fit it in. I have some background mountains. So sometimes you do a Google image search and it will just never render here. And that's a bad sign. And then it's, when you view the image, sometimes it will misdirect and go somewhere. So if that happens, you just use another image. Now this image is, is beautiful, but it's actually um, fairly noisy. And if you look at it, you can see little purple and green pixels scattered throughout. So there are higher and lower quality images, but it's still big enough that it should be usable. Now, this is all copyrighted work that we're using. So it's going to be just like with the cartoon jumble. So in order to make it truly our own, so that we could sell this as our own artwork, we'll have to transform it. We'll have to be sure that it doesn't rely at all on the original material and that the original material isn't really recognizable. Now, if you want to be super safe, I'll show you another way you can go about it. Instead of just using Google image search, you can use a copyright free image search like Pixabay, which is this new one that I've enjoyed. And I can search for mountains there and it won't have nearly as many, but every image that it does have is going to be a high enough resolution for me to use and is going to be free of copyright. So I, I can just use it exactly as it is if I wanted to. 
and each image will say that on their individual page.